It's good to be back, guys. Today I'm making a sweet reverb bass using a simple trick. Let's get started. What's essentially going on with the sound is I'm pushing a small pluck through a large amount of distortion, well bam, that drives all the way up, a large amount of compression, all these bands are cranked, a small amount of shaping here, and then you guessed it, the reverb filter with the cutoff very low, which means it's stretching out the sound a ton. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of this off just so you can hear the pluck before, cause you already heard what the sound sounds like. Let's make sure all this is off, perfect. And this is what we're working with. And you'll see that because we have a pluck like that, if I if I crank this up, completely loses its integrity and its shape. So using a pluck and then using the lower cutoff of the reverb filter is pretty much the idea behind this sound. So something you'll notice about the front page is it's actually not too complicated. The wavetable we're starting with is from the digital pack and it's called Hypa. The main thing we're doing with Hypa is creating a plug by taking an LFO and let's bring this down to just above the halfway point of this bottom box here. And we're going to go ahead and put that on 1 8 and trigger and then we're going to go ahead and throw this on the level to create our plug. Next up we're going to go ahead and bring it down two octaves. The next thing we're doing is taking a regular sawtooth wave and using it to get a cool mid-range sound out of our bass. We're gonna go ahead and put it on FM from B and throw it on 45%. We're not done with the FM part yet. We're gonna be putting an LFO on it, but I'm gonna do that later to show you how it affects the sound. The last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take this square sign, knock it down two octaves, and then just take a regular 1-8 trigger wobble, bam, throw it on like 80, and direct a sub out. And then last but not least, let's turn off our second oscillator so that we're only using it for FM. Next, let's see how we're using effects to change it up. And you'll notice that I just took some tape saturation and drove it. Next thing I did is just use this as a cheap way to reduce the low section a little bit of my bass uh, by using a static phaser. And then, well, bam, just cranking up all of these bands in order to create a really intense sound and a little trick I do to clean up the sound is to increase the release and that just allows the compressor to affect more of the sound and kind of tune it back a little bit. We're going to move all this up and then the next thing we're going to go ahead and add is an EQ and for the EQ we're just using it to shape our sound so we're going to use a low pass. We're going to bring it down to like 43 for a Q to get rid of that resonance. And then we're going to use our trusty pluck to bring this down to about, like I say, 470. And then at 30, we're going to get a good shape out of that. Cool. Last but not least is our reverb filter. And the reverb filter is what's going to make it sound super cool. And we're going to put it on 24 hertz, knock it up to 15%. So cool, I love it. And then in order to get that cool timbre, we're just gonna take an LFO on bar, have it on off, and we're just gonna have it slightly sweep back at about 10 on the, uh, on the FM. And that's gonna change up the timbre as each one sweeps by. The last thing we're adding to make our bass really complete is a ton of hyper. And to do that, we're just cranking up this, putting this on seven, putting the detune on 70%, and then putting the rate down. And that just sounds great. Now, something that I like to do when I'm using a ton of distortion is to take a peak in the low range frequencies, low mid-range frequencies, well in this case 90, which is pretty low, and just crank up a drive and create a peak there. 
which is like, why would you do that? You're getting rid of your highs, you know, what are you doing? And the reason why is whenever you send increased like low and mid frequencies through tons of distortion before you over compress the crud out of it, it tends to have just really nice, like thick effects on the bass. So it's not a big deal that we're losing all this high because once we throw on the OTT here, which I bring down the depth of 20% just to tune it back a bit, throw on a uh, kilohertz distortion and any distortion here is fine. You don't have to use this one. I use this one. I don't even have any drive on here. It just adds a little bit of character and then some spread. I really like that distorted crunch that this gives. And then to finish it off, I used a multiband compressor, which just to increase the highs and mess with the release a little bit on some of the, uh, on the middle band. I used a stereo enhancer to kind of bring in this width of the sound a little bit so that it sounded a little better mixed. And then these are just typical reverbs that I use. One that's huge and encompasses everything that I use automation for, the regular one, and then a limiter. And that's pretty much it. The other cool thing I like about this bass is what happens when you put the octave of oscillator B up by one. Oh my jeez. Now with every sound that I do, I throw it in a big folder and put it up on my Patreon. For just $3 a month, you get access to my entire tutorial library and a bunch of extras I haven't even mentioned. On top of that, you have the opportunity to go to higher tiers, which get some pretty cool perks. Uh, they're nothing too crazy or amazing. It's more just getting to talk to me more, which I don't really know if that's even... I also have a Discord server and you can check out the link in the description. It's here that we share samples, uh, new tips and tricks, and pretty much just hang out and have a good time. Other than that, it's going to do it for this video, guys. See you later.